Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Jenny. I'm from Jenny Card Designs. Thanks so much for joining me today. My YouTube channel contains content that is intended to share paper crafting tutorials and inspiration with all of you. I hope that you enjoy. In today's video, I've got another Chop It Up inspired project for you using 6x6 pattern paper. Let's get into it. Okay, so I've got a Gina K Designs Pure Luxury Paper. This is the Winter Cheer pattern paper. And I've got some white cardstock and we're going to take some of this pattern paper and this white cardstock and we're going to create a set of Christmas cards. And this is super easy, a really fun way to make a bunch of Christmas designs. And I'm going to show you how to use up some of that pattern paper. All right, let's start with the card bases. First up, I have 16 pieces of Nina Classic Crest Solar White 110 pound cardstock. It's a nice heavy base weight cardstock, and we're going to turn these into 5x7 card bases. So let's start there. All right, so. First up, I'm going to cut the cardstock across the eight and a half inch side. I'm going to cut that down to seven inches. Okay, seven inches and cut. And then I'm going to rotate my cardstock and then I'm going to cut this down to 10 inches. So this is going to be our card base and these scraps we're going to use those later so hang on to those. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for all 16 of my pieces of cardstock. So one more time across oops, across the eight and a half inch side we're going to cut down to seven inches. Rotate the cardstock and cut down to ten inches. Okay and then we'll just speed through this very quickly. So we now have 16 pieces that measure 7 by 10, 16 pieces that measure 1 by 7, and 16 pieces that measure, I think it's 1 and a half by 11. So these can be used for many things, including stamping of your sentiments, uh, creating little tags and things like that. So I'm going to set these aside, and we're going to come back to this later on and use these to create our sentiments and some other cool things. Okay, so I'll set those aside and I'm going to now score my card bases. So I'm going to grab my scoreboard across the 10 inch side. We're going to score these at 5 inches. I'm going to grab a score tool and I'm going to score across the 10 inch side at 5 inches. Okay, and then I'll set that aside Again, across the 10 inch side, we'll score at five inches. And I'll do that for all 16 of my card bases. Okay, so our cardstock is all scored. Next I'm going to do is grab a bone folder. I like to use the Teflon bone folder because it doesn't leave any markings or sheen across the cardstock. So I'm going to fold my cardstock and crease those score marks. Okay, so now we have all of our card bases ready to go. So I'm going to set these aside and now let's work on the pattern paper. So for this Gina K Designs pattern paper, you get three of each design. And for my cards today, I only want to use one of each piece of paper. So I'm just going to pull out one of each. These are some really gorgeous designs. And I have some really great ideas for you to use up this pattern paper. I love this color palette. Okay, here we are. We have eight sheets of pattern paper. Okay, so my idea for this particular pattern paper is to mix the busier patterns with the more solid patterns. 
So we're going to cut up these pieces of pattern paper to create some really cool effects on our cardstock. And it's going to be super simple. There will be super simple measurements. It will not be complicated in any way. Okay, so first, the most important thing is the measurement. So we're going to take one piece and they're all going to be cut the same. I'm going to grab this trimmer because I find it would be easier for the pattern paper because it's smaller. So the first thing you want to do is cut the strip at two inches. So I'm going to cut two inches off. Okay, so this is going to be for one card. Then I'm going to turn this cardstock and I'm going to cut at two inches again. So you're going to get a sheet like this, like this, and like this. And we're going to run through and do that for all eight sheets of pattern paper. The exact same measurements. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. You can do a couple of pieces at a time because it's thinner cardstock. So we're going to cut two inches. Okay. And then two inches. The only thing that you need to be mindful of is the orientation of how you want your cards. So when you cut up these pieces of paper, you want to make sure that these particular designs, like this, are going in a portrait style, okay? And then these ones are going to be going in a landscape style. So for my designs anyways, that's how I'm going to use them. So we'll have some cards that are orientated this way and some that are orientated this way. Okay, so I'm going to keep going and I'm going to continue cutting up these strips. Now for this one, when I put it on a landscape, the pattern will be sideways or I could turn it this way, but I mean it doesn't really matter. It's up to you how you want to create your cards. So basically we're going to create pieces on our card bases that measure four by six. Okay, so here's just an example of how we're going to use these. So I'll grab two of my card bases to show you. So we're going to start with one pattern and two patterns. Okay, so in four by six, and then one pattern and two patterns. And again, four by six. So that's the way I plan on laying these out. Now, if you want to create a layer, you can always cut out a piece of solid color cardstock that matches your designs um, to give it a little border. I have these um, metallic cardstocks and they're just sitting around on my stash, so I'm hopefully going to be able to use up some of these. I think I'll probably just stick with the silver, I think. Let's take a look and see what that might look like. Yeah, I think I'll do that. I think I'll work with the silver. I think that'll work for all of my patterns. So I'm just going to grab the silver color paper and I'm going to cut out some layers for this. So my, my layers are going to need to be four and a quarter by six and a quarter. So I'm going to start trimming up this panel to six and a quarter and four and a quarter. Okay, so we get this perfect panel to mat our pattern paper on. Okay, so I have my silver cardstock panels, I have my pattern paper, and my card bases. So now I'm going to start to mix and match the patterns and start to assemble these layers. So let's start with a piece of silver, piece of pattern paper, and one of the patterns. 
crisp away like that. That's nice. Like that one, or this one. Oh, I like that. I think that's nice. We'll put that like that. I like that. Okay, the next one we have is some swirlies. So because this is more solid, I'll use one of those busier patterns. There we go. So that's one. And this is my creative process. I'm just going to run through these and pick out what I think is going to match the best. Super pretty. There we go. Okay, that looks great. And now we're going to mix and match these patterns. So we'll get a swirl and a busier pattern, a snowflake, and This is the only one that I think I'm going to have to work it this way because of the pattern, the direction of that pattern. Okay. Then we have a snowflake with a snowflake with holly berries. And then There we go. So this is how I'm going to lay out all of my cards. And now I'm going to adhere the pattern paper to the layer to the card base. I'm going to be using a lot of glue for this. So I want to use the most cost effective. And I'm going to line these up as best as I can. Get them as centered as possible. And we go and now I'm going to adhere this to my card base and again as centered as I possibly can get it there we go so I want to put a little bit of weight on that to hold it down so I'm just going to grab a paper weight this is the same tool that I use to press on my misty door it's kind of cool. So I'll just set that down to give the, the glue a chance to dry while I glue everything else together. Okay. Okay. So all of my panels are complete and glued together. Now, after adhering these together, I had realized something. Um, and I just want to let you all know <laughs> before I explain, I am a finance officer. I have a background in finance. I spend my days running numbers budget sheets and things like that. So um, let me just say that it's very early in the morning. My entire house is sleeping and I was I had this idea and I came to my craft room to create. And so I had told you in the beginning of this video that we're going to make 16 cards. And after cutting up my panels and gluing things together, uh, I made it quite a few errors. And I mean, hopefully my boss doesn't realize that I'm not good with numbers or maybe it's just because it's <laughs> early in the morning <laughs> uh, okay so anyways the whole moral of the story is <laughs> we got 12 cards we didn't get 16 we got 12 and that's because I was thinking eight pieces of pattern paper two cards per paper and then that would make 16 now what I wasn't realizing was that I'm actually using two patterns per card. So you get three patterns per paper, but I'm taking two of those per card. And this is what we have. Let's take a look. So I have these wonderful portrait style. Now the fun thing about these ones is that they can also be landscape. These ones specifically can be a landscape style or portrait. This one, because the pattern is orientated 
in a portrait style, I will leave this as a portrait. So we'll continue to take a look at those. And again, same thing, they can be orientated whichever way you want. Okay, this one cannot because of the pattern. I mean, it can, but I'm very particular about those types of things. I want the pattern to be, you know, look like it's supposed to, not look weird. <laughs> okay, all right, so here we go. So and as well, these ones can go portrait or landscape, whatever your preference is. So we have all of these beautiful cards and it only took me a few minutes really just cut glue that was it um it's pretty simple now the next thing i want to do to finish up these cards is put a sentiment on them i had also thought about putting a strip to like uh, separate the patterns and you could do this in one of my previous videos i shared with you this little quick tip on how to create foil strips and you could just grab one of those foil strips and place it in between the transition of the patterns to create, you know, a more embellished look. I think that's really cute. So we could definitely do that, or you could just leave it as is and continue on to your sentiment. Uh, leave me a note in the comments down below and tell me what you would rather see. Would you rather see the foiled strip or would you rather just see it left alone like that? We could also do glitter or even the leftover cardstock that we use to mat the background. I have some of those left over as well. And you can always cut those up and turn them into little strips like this and create a grounding element for your card. I think this is too big, obviously. I don't like, it takes up too much of the pattern paper. But then again, you could to use that and then stamp your sentiment and use that as like a matte layer. Ooh, I like that. That would be fun. What do you think? Oh, I love that. We could put like a Merry Christmas right across there. That's really pretty. Hmm. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that for the, the landscape style ones. And then I'm going to come up with a different design for these ones. So let's go ahead and start figuring out the measurements that we're going to need. So first off, I'm going to decide which cards that I want to use that design on. So for sure, this one, this one, this one, no, 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 and no. Okay, so we have three. <laughs> that wasn't a whole lot. So we have three, and we're going to cut a piece of this that measures. Let's go six inches, and then we'll cut this. Actually, we could cut this at six inches. Sorry. We could cut this at six inches, and this at six and a quarter, and then it will fit exactly on our cardstock. So let's do that. Let's do that three times. So we're using up some of those little white straps. Uh, strips from cutting up the card bases so that's a great use for those extra scraps that normally I would just toss in my drawer and they would never see the light of day and I'd never use them ever again so I like that I'm getting used you know extra miles out of that scrap cardstock all right so let's cut these down okay the next thing we're going to need is to find a sentiment in our crafty stash that's going to fit across there nicely I'm sure out of the hundreds of stamp sets that I have, I've got something that's going to fit in there nicely. So I'm going to take a quick browse through my stamps and see if I can find something. Alternatively, if you don't have anything that fits, you can always print something. You know, you can print it and or even handwrite it. If your handwriting's good, you could definitely do that with a nice fine liner marker or something. I have terrible penmanship. I am not going to write on these, so I'm going to see if I can find a stamp. Okay, so I searched through my stash and I found this, oh my goodness, beautiful, absolutely lovely Alta New Build-A-Flower poinsettia. And it is the most gorgeous poinsettia. I love this. Usually at Christmas time, I stamp this multiple times, as you can see, and I create tons of cards with it. But for today, I'm just going to use this 
gorgeous scripty wishing you a Merry Christmas sentiment. I love that and it's going to fit so nicely across our little white panel. So let's get into that. Peel this up and see. Oh yeah, that's going to look gorgeous. Okay, so what we're going to do then is grab a Misty and get this piece of cardstock loaded up so that we can stamp it and get stamping perfection. Okay, so I have my Misty stamping tool and I'm going to line up my cardstock and my sentiment. Now I just need to determine what color I want to stamp this in. I think I'm going to go with... Hmm... I was going to say Christmas Pine, the Gina K Designs Christmas Pine, but this one doesn't have any Christmas Pine in the design, so I'm going to have to pick something else. Let's go with Gina K Designs Red Velvet. I think that will match all three of these cards perfectly. Okay, so that's the color I'm going to use. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to ink up my stamp nice and good. Make sure my cardstock is pinned right in the corner of my Misty. Okay, and close the door of my Misty and press. I'll use my little peacock press. Let's see what that looks like. Very nice. I think I'm going to leave it just like that. One stamp, that's perfect. All right, let's do that for all three of these pieces of cardstock. And now we're going to adhere these. Let's adhere our strip to the center of our cardstock. Beautiful. Do this two more times. There we go. All right, that looks lovely. Okay. So the last thing I'm going to do for these cards is pop this little panel onto the front of my card. So I think what I'll do is kind of like move it down a bit more, I think, so that it looks like there's more of this pattern than this pattern. That looks kind of cool. And then the one other thing I want to do to it is grab some of those extra scraps of paper and I'm going to add some dimension in behind this so that it pops up a little bit and it looks you know, nice and thick and substantial. And then I get rid of these pieces of cardstock without having to use craft foam. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to add two pieces behind each sentiment. I love getting the extra mile out of my stockpile. So I'm going to adhere this down to the front of my card. There we go. Wow, that's really pretty. Man, I love the way that looks. That is a really nice Christmas card. Okay, let's keep moving on. Here we go, three cards complete. Those look really nice. I really like the way these ones turned out. So that's it for these ones. You can step these up a bit, you can add some embellishments, or you can just keep them simple, just like this. And all we used was some basic pattern paper, a little bit of silver cardstock for a bit of shine, and a simple sentiment. Super cute. All right, let's keep moving and create some different designs with the other cards. Okay, so what I decided to do was just finish the cards. Um, you get the idea about cutting the pattern paper. So I went ahead off screen and I just finished up these cards with some basic sentiments and I'll just walk you through the different designs I chose. I had a fight with a pumpkin carving tool, so please disregard my band-aid. <laughs> So we're just going to ignore that, okay? <laughs> Don't look. All right, so you see in the first three cards that we did, these are, okay. The next ones that I did off screen, 
I chose one of the medallions from th this stamp set called Holiday Seals and this is a collaboration with a bunch of different uh, stamp companies and I used the Gina K Design Seal to create this beautiful Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And then I used some of the Gina K Designs Master Layers dies to get that little medallion with the silver backer. And I also carried that silver strip through the transition of the pattern paper. So I did all three of these cards the same. And then the next one, the next set of cards I did, I used, um, oh yes, and I also used the Gina K Designs Red Velvet ink for this one. And for these cards, I used a Gina K Design set for this. I used the Holiday Tapestry and I used that Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And I stamped that in Christmas Pine ink. And I used some of the newer Master Layouts dies. I used the Master Layouts number eight for this one. And I used that large medallion to cut out a circle background and then the stitch circle and put those right on the center of the card. I like the way that looks and then for the final three cards I did a little bit something different here I used a little bit of that silver cardstock to transition between the pattern paper and then I used the Merry Christmas again that's from the Gina K Designs holiday tapestry stamp set and I stamped again with Christmas pine ink and I used this little banner and that one is from as for Master Layouts die set 4, and that has a little stitched banner. Okay, so that's it. This card set is complete. I used 8 pieces of pattern paper, a few scraps of silver, and some white cardstock for my sentiments, and then we get 12 beautiful Christmas cards. So here's a look at all of the Christmas cards that I made today, using just some basic products from my stash. Why don't you go check out some of your pattern paper, pull it out, and see what you can create using supplies that you already have in your craft room. I hope this video inspires you to do so. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend it here with me. I appreciate the support as always. Coming up on screen are a couple of videos I think you may enjoy, including an entire playlist for my Chop It Up video series. I hope that you'll check that out and get inspired to chop up some of your pattern paper. Have yourself a lovely day and I will see you in the next one. Bye!